Good evening. This is Terry and Todd, and welcome to another Ask Titans Live webinar. We are super excited to be with you again this evening. As Jason said earlier, we are here to help you get through the registration process for the 2019-2020 fall term. Whether you are a current student returning, having been here before, or whether you're a brand spanking new student who are coming to SBC for the very first time, our goal this evening is to help you get through the process and get started on your way to taking the next steps of achieving your dreams. Todd, in fact, I'm wondering who out there is a new student and who's a returning student. If you wouldn't mind, Jason, will you pop up in the chat box? I'd like everyone to take a poll. Let us know if you're a brand new student to St. Petersburg College or if you're a returning student registering for you know, your second, third, fourth term here at the college. And while you're doing that, I know Todd's got some other great news to some great information to share. Yes, Tara and I are gonna be talking more or less about general information um, as relates to the different processes, whether it's financial aid, registration, admissions, um, pass through balances and things of that sort. However, we do realize that some of you have more personal issues that you'd like to get assistance for and get one-on-one -on -one service. Well, guess what, Terry? We have one-on-one -on -one service to provide. We have experts that are gonna be online waiting to help you with your individual things that need to That's be taken fantastic. care That's fantastic, that's yes. fantastic. We have staff from all over the college who are standing by waiting to help you this evening as you um, try to get registered for the fall and get ready to go. And in fact, um, do another poll. I do wanna do another poll because yeah, I wanna know sure. why students haven't registered yet. So if you wouldn't mind, and I know it's two polls in a row, but if you wouldn't mind, just um, let us know what the reason is you haven't registered. There's gonna be a few items on that poll, uh, test scores, uh, financial aid, no transcripts, a hold on your account. Let us know because that's gonna help us sort of um, decide where this webinar goes. And while you're doing that, I wanna talk about some fun stuff. I right. wanna talk about what I loved to do last time, which was give away prizes. We gave away a ton of swag bags last time. We gave away Titan towels and Titan t-shirts yes. and Titan water bottles. Yes, we and we've it. even got these little um, Titan uh, chargers, that uh, things for chargers for your phone that we can give away. So we wanna give those away. And in fact, last uh, webinar, we gave away to one lucky winner a free tuition for a three credit class valued at $389. And I want everyone to say hi to Logan. Hi, Logan. Congratulations up, Logan? if you logged in again. Logan was our winner last time, and tonight one of you is going to be the lucky winner uh, of that three credit tuition class value at $389. That's awesome. I don't That's know, awesome. Todd. I'm excited about that. In fact, Todd, I'm feeling it. I want to give something away. Jason, who's in the chat box? Let's give something away. Becca. Becca, Becca, hi. Thank you for logging in. Um, if you will put your last name and your t-shirt size in that chat box, we're going to send you a Titan swag bag full of Titan merch so that you can show you're proud to be a Titan. All righty. Yeah. Now getting back to, again, some of those individual issues, we're going to talk a little bit later about how exactly to do that. We do have a, um, a mechanism set up for you. It's going to be a survey that you all can complete to, to tell us what are you more in need of? And as I said before, once you complete that, we'll be able to get that one-on-one -on -one assistance for you. Someone will call you this evening. And if we can't get to you this evening, we will get to you within the next 24 to 48 hours. You will get a phone call to get some one-on-one -on -one assistance for what those things are that you need to help yourself. Now, we realize that everyone is not going to be able to get registered by Monday, August 19th. But that's okay, Todd. Do you know why? Yes, I do. Because the college, St. Petersburg College, doesn't just have classes starting on August 19th. We've got a variety of sessions for this fall term. In fact, we've got six starting dates. And I want, I want to just show everyone, if you go to our main webpage, go.spcollege.edu, you're going to see this lovely picture here with these two students in um, safety goggles looking at each other. And you can click down here, choose any of our six starting dates. If you log in here, you're going to see that we've got regular full-term classes. Those are the classes that start August 16th. Not we've yet. got August 19th, thank you. We've got first eight-week session classes that start that same day. We've got weekend classes that start August 23rd. 
We've got express classes that start in September on the 16th and eight week two that start October 14th. And then we've got the dynamic dated classes that start and end throughout the term. So you can go into any of these. I wanna, I wanna go into weekend classes because if you can't get in for this Monday, you might be ready to go by Friday. You might get, get whatever is, is stopping you from enrolling exactly. and be ready to go by Friday. So if I click find weekend classes, it's going to pull up all the weekend offerings for me. And what I want to show you is not just how many fabulous offerings we have for weekend college, which is a great option for those of you who work, who say, I can't make it to school. I'm at work. We offer Saturday classes. What better way to continue your education? So, uh, but I want to talk to you on the left side of your screen. Look at this filter. You can filter by session. So I, I just clicked weekend. I could also click express if I wanted. I can click click by um, campus, if I have a particular campus, if I want an online class, if I want a blended class, if I want a fully face-to-face -face class, and I can then um, filter it that way. So let's say I want an online classes that are starting for Weekend and Express. I've got a couple pages of classes I can go through that I might be eligible to take for, for this fall that don't start August 19th, they start after Monday. Um, now we do have a question, so I wanna go to Vincencia. I, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, what a beautiful name. Um, and it says, how do I access the online classes that I have registered for? And that is a great question, and guess what? Because you asked such a great question, you're getting That's a swag right. bag, right. woo, Vincencia. Can you enter your last name and your t-shirt size in the chat box, and we're gonna send you a swag swag bag as well. And what I want to tell you is when you log into your MySPC portal, let me toggle back and I can show you real fast. Um, my apologies. Why isn't it toggle? There we go. So we're looking at Logan again. Hi, Logan. I'm going to toggle here. When you click on your and you log in to your tile page, we're going to talk in a minute about the My Status tile. But if you look over to the left, you're going to see a My Courses tile. That's how you get um, access, that's our online learning platform, and that's how you gain access to your online classes. But please note, classes are not gonna show up today. They usually show up the Friday before the start date of classes. That's when you can go in, uh, look at your syllabus, and then start preparing for classes that, that will start either that, that following Monday or following week. Okay? okay, so now what we can do is get into the agenda and what we are gonna discuss this evening. Fantastic. So tonight's agenda, we're going to talk about to-do list items. We're going to talk about paying, how to pay the application fee. Todd's going to go through the financial assistance process. Then we're going to talk about types of holds, pop-up messages that are often seen in common enrollment error messages. These are the things that we find students often experience when they're trying, trying to enroll in classes. Um, and as we move toward that, um, I'm going to answer your question, Becca, in just a moment. You're going you're gonna to hear me talk about that. And, um, and I want to move now to just logging into the portal, finding your My Status page, and looking at your to-do list. And this page shows a typical to-do list. It shows items needed like test scores placement levels. And Becca, that's what you had a question about, or advising session. Now, test scores placement levels, Becca, that depends on quite a few things. If you've previously attended college, or if, uh, if and when you've graduated from high school, if you're from a Florida public high school and your graduation date. But if you, for sure, if you attended a private school, if you're coming from an out-of-state high school, or you've earned a GED, that placement test would definitely be required. If you're wondering, um, I suggest you complete the WITS survey and ask to speak to an academic advisor who's gonna be able to answer that question for you in particular. Now, getting back to the to-do list item, this, or the to-do list, I'm sorry, on your My Status page, that really is the area you wanna focus on, completing those items so that you can enroll in classes. You'll see on the left a to-do list that is um, for, for a new student who maybe is just bringing in a high school transcript. The student isn't bringing in any college transfer credit work. And then on the right, you see a, la a longer to-do list for a student who might have applied to a baccalaureate program, okay? Now, one of the first things you're gonna wanna do is pay your application fee. When you're on that My Status page, if you scroll down under Finances, 
you're going to see a link to pay application fee. And really what I want to talk to you about here is that our system is not compatible with Safari. So if you've got an iPhone, don't use that to pay your application fee. You're going to need to get onto a computer. You're going to need to use Firefox or Google Chrome or Internet Explorer to pay that application fee. And if you're showing you've paid the application fee, if you know you've done that, but it's still showing an outstanding balance, you can always reach out to our business office. The um, contact information is provided on the, on the screen here. But tonight, because we've got people standing by, I want you to complete that survey. I want you to complete the Titan survey and request to speak to someone in the business office, and they'll be able to help you with that. Now we're going to segue to Todd talking about some financial aid items and, and how that process takes place. Well, before we do that, we do have a couple of questions. Oh, about great. Registration. So, yeah, let's take sure. care of those questions let's see. and we'll move on. Um, so, Cisco wanted to know, are my online classes at my own pace? Yes, they are. It, um, those classes are what we call asynchronous. You can log in and log out at any time. Uh, the professor would let you know if there was a specific time you needed to log in, maybe for a particular lecture or something. What, what you want to particularly pay attention to, Cisco, is that you are submitting coursework and any tests are taken by the due date and time date, and that's all in Eastern Standard Time. But as far as the online class, you can log in and log out, and um, if if the um, assignment is open, you can complete it. And as long as you complete it by the due date, you're good to go. And we have another question from Carrie. It says, when I was registering, I was on a totally different screen and it was more difficult to use. Again, how do I get to that screen? Okay, so you want to know how to get to the registration screen within your MySPC portal. So you are going to log in. Hold on just a minute, Todd. I'm going to flip back. Okay. And I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to actually, I've got to yeah. scroll. I don't know how to get out. My apologies, guys. We're going to go through quite a bit here to get to the ending page of my presentation. Steps to register. So you're going to click at the top. You're going to click on register for classes, Carrie. You're going to click on enroll. And then you're going to click on add a class. And then down here where it says enter class number, you're going to enter that four digit class number that you would find from searching for classes on our um, website. Okay. And I hope that answered your question. If it didn't, I recommend you complete that Titans Live survey and an academic advisor can walk you through that process to find the exact class you need. Okay. Sounds good. All right. So getting back to financial aid. Mm -hmm. Todd, let's talk about how students uh, can apply for and all the process so that they can ensure aid is in order so that they can um, pay for classes. And right now what we're going to discuss is basically what to do once you've been awarded financial aid, you've begun the financial aid process. Now, as Terry alluded to earlier, we have a to-do list as well. The same list that you would go to your MySPC to find out for academic issues or admissions, you also found a to-do list for your financial aid outstanding items as well. And this is just a sample of what it may look like. Once you go to this list, please understand, the, the um, outstanding documents or items are on your left, but we also have these live links that you can see here in the middle that you can click on at any time to get additional information. So for this particular one, we're talking about 2017 tax transcript information. But if you click on that, it's gonna bring you to a point where it provides more information on what we're actually asking for. And then you can also see the two options that you have here. Whether you are filing taxes or you file taxes as an individual, or whether you file those taxes as a joint uh, married couple. But either way, you will get the additional information that you need as well as the live links to those forms that we are asking for if you click there. Now, going back to your MySPC page, you can see there's quite a bit of information here in regards to financial aid. Um, you can come here and you can take a look at the aid year to ensure that you're in the right place at the right time. Um, you can see your FAFSA status. We've received the FAFSA for this particular individual. This particular person was not selected for verification. And also you can see what the current SAP status is. And this particular student is meeting academic progress. So they're in good standing and ready to go. 
Now you can also come here to take a look at your financial aid awards, okay? And this is gonna get us to the point to where we've had quite a few questions that came in asking, hey, what do I do once I've been awarded financial aid? So what you would do is go to my SPC, click view awards, make sure you click the correct academic year. In this particular time, it's gonna be 2020 or the 2019-20 academic year. And then you're gonna be brought to this place, okay? This is your conditions of financial assistance. Once you get here, this is where we bring you the very first time that you're coming in to take a look at your financial aid awards. Please be sure to read through this document. It will let you know a lot of different things to expect and to look for as you move through the process. Uh, just to give an example, the book line of credit. That's something that some individuals qualify, but not all. But most of our students do qualify for that. We also talk about what happens if you withdraw from classes and how that might affect your financial aid. So again, be sure to read through the conditions of financial assistance. And once you do, then you just click at the bottom that I agree to these terms. And that's going to bring you to your actual award for the academic year. Now, the only awards that you have to actually accept and or decline are student loans. All grants and scholarships, we automatically accept those within the system because that's all free money. In this particular case, you have two loans represented here. You have your direct sub and your direct unsub. So once you click here and accept, it's gonna open up another column here that gives you the opportunity to go in and adjust those amounts. Please understand, when we offer you these loans, we are offering you the maximum amount that you possibly can qualify for based on your enrollment. The only thing that you can do here is accept it for the amount that has been offered, or you can reduce it. In this case, it's gonna be reduced down to $2,000. And then also, too, you need to go make a decision on what you're going to do with the next loan. And in this particular case, they're going to decline it, and you click the Submit button, and everything is done there for you. Now, the next thing that you'll get to do once you've done that, you can go back and take a look at what your financial aid status is overall. Now that you've accepted those awards, again, click the correct aid year, and here you have it. These are the awards for the academic year, fall and the spring represented. And then it's broken out by term here. You have the fall term and you have the spring term. And those are the direct amounts that you would get based on the award that you accepted for the academic year. Now, Todd, if a student has a question, they can contact a financial aid advisor tonight, right? They, they sure can. Complete that Titans Alive um, survey. So and I want to let you know, so Freddie had a had a great question. And Freddie, you asked if one, if somebody has to pay the application fee before being able to speak to admissions or financial aid or an academic advisor. Absolutely not. You've completed that application. You are now part of the Titan family and you should reach out for assistance. Exactly. And, and we, we don't need that application fee. You will need to pay that for tr any transfer credit to post and in order to enroll in classes. But until that time, you can speak to any one of us and, and kind of move through the process. And because of that, Freddie, guess what? I'm sending you a swag bag. All right. Freddie, put your last name and the size of your t-shirt in the uh, chat box and we're gonna send you some free stuff, all right? And to add to that, Freddie, uh, let me go a step further. You don't even have to apply in order to come get information on financial aid Absolutely or right. academic advising. Anytime you walk through those doors seeking assistance, we are here to help you. Whether you've applied here or not, or whether you've paid your application fee or not, we're here to help you. And you can always get the assistance that you need. Definitely. Looks like we have Definitely. another question. It does. Jennifer wants to know, if she, uh, how do I register if the class I need to take for my program is closed? Um, I would recommend that you search for other um, sections or offerings of that same class if you're unable to find what you're looking for jennifer then i recommend reaching out to your assigned advisor and who will more than likely direct you to the dean of the program to, to help you get enrolled in that class but i would recommend reaching out to your academic advisor first to find out there might be another class that's part of your curriculum that's offered at a good day and time and maybe you could take that this term and then the closed class you could take in a, in a future term okay now, this so, time I want to move back to what we were sharing with you about the one-on-one -on -one assistance that we can provide this evening and tonight. Um, if you take a look here at this screen, you can see that we have a survey, and the link to this survey is going to be provided to you. And you can see here, you have different choices, admissions and records, academic advising, financial aid, and the business office. All you need to do is hit that drop-down arrow here and decide which one it is, and just go ahead and go to the next screen and put in your information. It's gonna ask you for your name, your student ID, and also to your, your phone number. And we will give you a call tonight. 
Again, we have quite a few people that are logging in this evening. So as I said, we may not get to you tonight. We're gonna to do everything that we can to do so. But if we don't get towards you tonight, we are going to get in contact with you in the next 24 to 48 hours. Yeah, definitely. Okay? We'll be, from what I understand, we'll be calling up until about eight o'clock this evening. That is correct. If you don't get a phone call by then, you, um, you will receive a phone call within the next 48 hours. We are here, We're, our job is to try and get you enrolled and, and get you moving forward through the process as best we can. So that's, that's where our efforts will be going. So definitely uh, fill that out and someone will get back to you. Hey, yeah. I think it's a good time for another giveaway. You think it's a well, good time? I think, I think so time. too. Jason, give me a name. <clears throat> Kelly. Kelly, we're going to move on to common holds in a minute, but Kelly, I'm going to send you a swag bag. You're going to get a t-shirt and you're going to get a water bottle and you're going to get a Titan towel. If you'll just put in your t-shirt size and um, your uh, last name in the chat, then we'll be, we'll be sure to send that to you. Sounds good. All right. So I want to move on to some common holds we have. I know that um, Rebecca asked a question earlier about flexible placement. Some of the, some of the, holds that we've got are test scores placement levels, flexible placement, missing transcripts, permanent resident card, and a business office hold. So I'm gonna go through those rather quickly and talk to you about them. That test scores placement levels hold, if you've got that, you are required to complete that testing if you're an out-of-state high school graduate, if you've got a GED transcript, if you graduated from a private high school, if you're a homeschooled student, and then if you graduated from a Florida public high school before 2007 or started grade nine prior to the 2003-2004 school year. Now, testing may or may not be required if you've completed any other college coursework at another institution um, that's regionally accredited and depending on where and when you graduated. And again, we can also take in lieu of test scores ACT or SAT test scores that have been taken within the last two years. So if you have test scores placement levels and you're unsure, I want you to complete that Titan survey. I want you to select academic advising and I want you to talk to an advisor tonight to determine if that's gonna be required for you or not. Now, the next type of hold I wanna talk about is flexible placement. That's where that high school uh, comes in again. Students with a flexible placement hold, it was based on when you graduated from high school and that you're a Florida public high school graduate and those dates. You have to reach out to an advisor to have that removed. They're gonna discuss initial course recommendations with you and they're gonna, they're gonna remove that hold for you. Um, so definitely fill out the Titan survey and reach out about that hold. Missing transcripts are sometimes a hold for some of you returning students. Students have a one semester grace period to get us those college transcripts. They can get us unofficial, and with an unofficial, an advisor can look and possibly waive those placement testing uh, holds for you if you've got those prior to getting the official transcripts in. Uh, but you would need to get those official transcripts in after the one term grace period. If there's something holding you up from being able to pay off maybe a balance at your previous college and that's why you can't get the transcripts, we'll work with you. You can reach out to admissions and records and on a term by term basis, you can provide proof of payment and that hold can be removed allowing you to register for that term and then the following term, it would have to be done again. You know, we would do that on a term by term basis. So you would reach out to admissions.records at spcollege.edu. Now, I do see we have a, another question in the chat from Coleman. And Coleman's asking, does my previous undergraduate GPA play any role in financial aid made available to me? Also, what if my income has drastically changed between 2017 and now? That is a great question, Coleman. Two and guess what? Questions. You're getting a swag bag. Put your last name and t-shirt size in the chat box, and we're gonna send you some, some great SPC merchandise to make you proud to be a Titan. Okay, Coleman, let me address the first question. Again, about whether your, your previous GPA will play a role in your financial aid here at St. Petersburg College. Yes, possibly it can. It just depends on the credits that you're gonna bring in and it's gonna be transferred over. If any of those previous grades can be can go towards your current degree program. In other words, if it can meet requirements for your current degree program, then yes, those grades that are coming in 
will play a role in your satisfactory academic progress, which is what we look at from a financial aid perspective. So yes, it could play a role. If you're coming in something totally different and those grades are not going to be required or can't be required for the current degree program, then those grades will not play a role in what you get here at St. Petersburg College. Now, the other question was, what if your income has drastically changed since 2017? Well, first and foremost, if you haven't already done the FAFSA, you need to go ahead and complete the FAFSA regardless of the change or not. The initial FAFSA is going to be based on your 2017 income. Now, after you submit the FAFSA, then what I recommend that you do is come in to speak with the financial aid advisor. If you are a distant student and you can't come in, you can also call one of our online financial aid advisors to get some assistance. What they will do is they will listen to your situation um, and they will assess that and let you know if you qualify to do what is called a professional judgment that's based on changing circumstances. Again, typically we, we do have issues where individuals have lost their jobs or something along those lines. And so, yes, there's been a drastic change in income and those are things that we can consider. But you will need, again, complete the initial FAFSA. It will have to be based on your 2017 income. We have another question that um, it, it's uh, also in the financial aid realm. It's about book line of credit, how that works. Okay. Carrie needs to purchase uh, books through financial aid if possible. Okay. That's what previously occurred yes. and wanting to know how that works with the college. Well, again, let's look at it this way. Again, um, I've already showed you how to go and take a look at what you've been awarded. So basically, you just take the amount of financial aid that you've been awarded for the term, okay? You compare that to the fees that you have outstanding for the term and based on your enrollment. As long as you have enough financial aid to cover those fees and then some left over after that, the portion that is left over can be used for what we call a book line of credit. And a book line of credit is anywhere from um, $100 to $800. And so if you have enough left, then yes, we can provide what is called a book line of credit to give you an advance, if you will. All you have to do is go to the bookstore, show your picture ID. It could be a driver's license or your student ID, and then they will allow you to purchase your books. And what they will do is they will credit it to your account. Once we draw the funding down from the state or from the federal government in regards to your financial aid award, we will pay off your outstanding tuition and fees and we'll pay off the book line of credit. If there's anything remaining after that, and that will come to you in a refund. So yes, we, you can use financial aid to help you purchase books. However, only if you have enough financial aid to cover your fees and have some left over after that. That's great. Great information, Todd. Thank you. I want to remind everyone that chat is not being monitored for specific questions. Please use this Titans Live survey or the Q&A tool if you have a specific question. It's more for general questions um, and for our uh, polls and then to uh, let us know your shirt size and your last name when I give away those swag bags. And Bradley, you're getting a swag bag. Put your last name and a t-shirt in. Bradley wants to know, tell me again, how to go to available classes to register. So Bradley, let me show you real quick. You can go to our main webpage, spcollege.edu, and you can click this link, choose any of our six starting dates, and it's gonna log you into all of our, all the sessions within the fall term. You can pick any one of those, it doesn't matter. I'll pick even regular that starts Monday, even though, I'm not going to be ready for classes Monday. I can tell you, Todd, I'm not ready yet, <laughs> but I can click on that. It's all right. It's okay if I'm not, because then on the left, I have all of these filters I can utilize to find the class I need. And then there's also a class search alphabetically up above. Okay. So I hope Bradley that that helped you out. Put your last name and t-shirt and you're going to get some Titan swag from me. Um, I'd like to go back. We were talking about book line of credit before, Todd. And if I can, I'd like to segue real fast, everyone. If your FAFSA is not set up right now, but you are in a position where um, you can pay out of pocket while you're waiting for all of that to process so that you can move forward and enroll in classes, I wanted, you to, I wanted to talk to you about a great option. It's the tuition payment plan. It's offered through Nelnet. And it is available. You can find it by logging into your MySPC portal. And under pay for classes, you would choose tuition payment plan. For the regular session that begins Monday, 
this Friday, the 16th is the last day to enroll. There's a small um, enrollment fee. And then depending, so for this Friday, because it's so close to the start of the regular session, there would be a 50% required down payment. And then it would break that other 50% up into two separate payments. Mm -hmm. So that maybe you just put 50% down and then all your financial aid would be um, resolved and everything. And you would basically um, pay yourself back, right? For yeah, what you exactly. put out before maybe making your next two payments even in September or October. So I did just want to kind of segue to that for those of you who are looking for options on how to pay for classes if, if you haven't completed the FAFSA yet and we're going to maybe have to wait a little mm -hmm. bit for exactly. that but yeah. you want it you're ready to everything else is ready to go possibly option. for this Monday it's a great option for you okay looks like we have a couple more questions oh great what have we got Antonio says I also have a busy work schedule Am I able to have advisory meetings slash financial aid meetings online or on the phone? I think I'll let you address that. Yes, yes, you are. In fact, if you fill out that Titans Live survey, you can have one tonight. You can fill out financial aid. Um, and then once a financial aid advisor speaks to you, they can forward you to an academic advisor who will then return a call to you as well. But yes, you can communicate with your advisors on, online. You can do it on the phone. You can do it on pers in person on any of our campuses. And then you can do it uh, via email as well. And that, mm -hmm. that's true yeah. for financial aid. Exactly. So we definitely have many ways for you to get the help you need, Antonio. And guess what, Antonio, for asking such a great question. Put your t-shirt size in and your last name. We're going to send you a swag bag, okay? I, and I just want ahead. to take Antonio to another place on our yeah. website. If we can uh, show the website up here for a sec. Um, go to financial aid. Antonio, just not sure what your schedule is like, but also, too, just to show you another opportunity of which you can get questions answered. You can use Ask Pete at any given time, but also, too, let's go to Ask FAS. Okay. This is one of the options that we have to ask questions online. If you click here online, you can put whatever question you want in regards to financial aid. It's going to take you to another survey. You can ask that question. It's going to go into our queue, and we will have our online financial aid advisors get back to you um, to discuss any situation that you want. If you want to set up a, an appointment or anything like that with financial aid, you can submit it by way of this as well, and someone will get to you. You just tell us the time that is best for us to contact you, and we will do so. Okay, just want to make sure you know all the different options that you have to get in contact with someone in financial aid. Fantastic. Before we get back to holds on the accounts and pop-up messages, um, there were a few other questions. Aiden's asking, what's the difference between the different course start dates? And I, I think what you're referring to is our different sessions. So, Aiden, we offer a full 16-week session that's called a regular session this fall term that would start on August 19th. We offer an express session that's 12 weeks in length. It's going to start four weeks later, which is September 16th. We offer an eight-week one session. That begins on August 19th, but it ends uh, mid-October and only lasts eight weeks. And then we would have an eight week two session that would start October 14th and go through the end of the term, which I believe is December 13th, yeah. if I remember correctly. The, um, some of the weekend classes, depending on the credit hour length, probably start and end um, on different dates. I know uh, August 23rd is the start date for most. But depending on the credit hour uh, of that course, it may have a different end date. It might not last the full term. So I hope I'm answering that question for you, Aiden. Um, and then we've got Glenda who asked, what if the private college is not accredited under the same accreditation as St. Petersburg College? Would I need placement testing? So Glenda, that is a great question. St. Petersburg College accepts credits from regionally accredited institutions. So if your school was not regionally accredited and your high school transcript dictated that you, you needed placement testing, then yes, you, you would need placement testing. Again, unless you happen to have taken the SAT or ACT in the last few years, but I would, um, I would caution that, that if I misunderstood your question in any way, I would, I would ask that you fill that Titan survey out so that an advisor can call you back to confirm your specifics and make sure you're on the right track and that I'm not telling you the placement test is holding you up when, when you could, could get ready to go with an unofficial transcript sent into that advisor tonight, okay? 
Now we got a few more questions, but we're just going to hold off on them right now. Okay. We're going to get back to, go the, back agenda, to the, go the agenda. Some of those Perfect. questions will be. Yeah. yeah. So I was I left off at missing transcript records hold again. That's where um, we can work with you and you can reach out to admissions.records at sbcollege.edu tonight. Fill out that Titan survey if that's if that's holding you up and someone will get back to you and talk to you about how that hold might be able to be removed. The um, next hold I want to talk about is the permanent resident card hold that if you see this hold and you're a distance student and you're unable to come to campus. You can scan the front and back of the permanent resident card and you can email it to residency documents at spcollege.edu. And again, if you have this hold, you can do that. If you've got any questions about the hold, you can email um, residency documents or tonight fill out that Titans Live survey and I want you to select admissions and someone will get back to you on that. The final holds we want to talk about are business office holds, Todd. Well, before we do that, why don't we go ahead and take a couple sure, more Sure, sure. So we've got um, Mackenzie's asking, where does the leftover money go from our book line of credit? Okay, that depends on how you get it set up with the business office. Typically, we have what is called our bank mobile card. Um, you can have it sent directly there, and if that's what you sign up for, you will get a card sent to you, and you can use that. But you can also have it um, sent to your personal bank account if you want. Please understand if you do have it set up for your personal bank account, when you get the notification that you have the refund, it could take about two to three business days for it to hit your actual personal account. So you have two ways. You can utilize the bank mobile card, uh, which is a third party service that we work with here at St. Petersburg College, or you can have those funds, you can have those funds funnel through to your own private bank account. So those are the two ways. Fantastic, fantastic. Mackenzie, you asked about money. I'm gonna save you some money. I'm gonna send you some swag. <laughs> Put your uh, last name and your t-shirt size in the chat box and we're going to send that out to you, okay? Thomas, I see your question and I'm going to get to that later in the program. I'm going to talk to you about running an advisement report in a little while. And then um, Jennifer is asking, if I change from a certificate to a, an associate, how long do I have? And what was the end of that question? Are we seeing that? How long do I have to take the placement test? Can I still get that done in time to register before the 18th? Um, Jennifer, that's, that's um, quite possibly. If you can go to a local campus, testing is free on any of our campuses the first time you test. Results are immediate. And then you can walk over and speak to one of our wonderful advisors on campus who can look at your test scores and then tell you what, um, what coursework is required initially in reading, writing, and mathematics. Okay, so you definitely can get that done. If you're a distance student and getting it done, um, you very well may be able to get it in time for Monday, that is cutting it close. But again, we've got those weekend, those express, those dynamic dated, and those eight week two classes. So we can definitely get you in something and get you started on your first step academically this term for sure. Okay, now moving back to the agenda, we're going to talk about business office holes. And typically, these holes are there because there's a pass through balance that is sitting out there. Um, and those pass through balances can be either financial aid related or non, or non financial aid related. But one thing I want to say is this first and foremost uh, quite often, I know a number of students, they let the fact that they have pass through balances keep them from trying to go move through the process and get registered. Don't do that. We have a lot of different options that we can utilize to help work with you and getting that pass through balance taken care of. Specifically, if it's a financial aid related um, uh, balance that is passed due, um, we can use current financial aid in some instances to help take care of pass through balances as long as your current financial aid award slash package is enough to cover your current fees and then some. So I recommend that again, if that's a situation that you run into, um, then get that survey completed tonight because again, yeah. we have financial aid individuals that are on the side, financial aid experts that are behind the scenes. They can walk you through their process and assess it to see if there's something that you can move forward and do. Also, in regards to non-financial aid related um, pass through balances, that is something that you will need to do the survey, complete the survey and submit it to the business office and they will have someone contact you as well. But again, don't assume that there's nothing that you can do except pay it all in full before moving forward. There are options, and we want to give you every option that you have to get you moving again so that you can, again, seize your destiny 
and get going with that, completing that degree. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, we've got um, a question from Dex about which campus do I go to to take placement testing and meet with an advisor? Well, Dex, my, my first recommendation would be that when you log in and you click your My Status page, you're gonna scroll under to My Academic Status. And I want you to look for your advisor's name because your advisor um, is very familiar with your community and your degree here at the college. So I would recommend that you go to your home campus if you're able to, so that you can meet with your assigned advisor when that placement testing is done. Now that said, testing is offered on um, most of our campuses. It is offered on a walk-in basis. So if you, if you live closer or work closer to a different campus, that is not a problem. You can go to that campus, complete that testing, and then walk over and be seen on a walk-in basis uh, by an advisor. Or if you're an online student but you live locally, you can get the testing done on campus and then you can always reach out to your online advisor uh, and schedule an appointment and we can have a phone conversation to get you going. Whatever's most convenient for you and whatever your schedule dictates, we're flexible that way, okay? We um, have a few more questions that roll Sure, again. that hey, sounds great. Hey, let's go to Erica. Erica says, if you're granted financial aid but you pay your classes or fees up front, will you still receive your financial aid award? Great question, great Erica. Question, it's Erica. about money. You're getting right. free stuff. Put your uh, last name and your uh, T-shirt size in there. I like questions about That's money, right. Todd. Yeah, so do I. So go do ahead. I. Tell them about the money. Erica, yes, you will still get your financial aid. What you qualify in financial aid is what you qualify for based on what you completed on your FAFSA. And whether you choose to pay the classes up front or not, you are still going to get your financial aid. In this particular case, um, when we bring in your financial aid funds, whether it's from the federal government, whether it's from the state of Florida or any other scholarship donor, what have you, the first thing that we do is go to look to see if there are any outstanding fees. We pay those fees. If there's anything remaining, as I said before, you get your refund. Well, in your particular case, since you would have already paid your, your outstanding fees, when we go to look for fees, there will, be, there will be no fees there. So that award would be now given to you in the form of a refund or reimbursement, if you will. But yes, to answer your question, just because you pay your fees up front, that will not um, preclude you from getting any financial aid. It has nothing to do with it. You pay, you do whatever you want to do. Financial aid that you've been awarded is going to come to you. Okay. So we have another question from Caitlin uh, regarding, uh, she's kind of following up to Mackenzie's question, asking how do you sign up for the money or get, or get the money transferred to the bank or to the... Uh, that is a great card. question. And again, mm -hmm. that's what you can, uh, we have our uh, individuals waiting for you, complete the survey from the business office, and you can get a hold of them and they can walk you through that process. Okay, great. And then Zach, hi Zach, nice, nice seeing you, glad you logged in. It, Zach said, I, enroll in, I enrolled into classes, but I'm waiting for my financial aid summary. Will I still be able to pay for the classes past the deadline once financial aid becomes available for me, or will I have to re-enroll later? And I, I think he might be talking about pushing out that due date. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. you're, you're actually not packaged, Zach, until you actually enroll in classes. And once you well, enroll in classes, well, right? For the most part, but there, yeah. there, there's a chance at this point in time, no, there's a chance that you, you could have been awarded prior to. Mm -hmm. In a lot of cases, you're not, but we can, you can get um, awarded prior to. But to answer his question specifically, if your financial aid award has not come, Okay, and that due date is coming. Yes, you have to come up with a way to get that paid for, or again, it will be dropped. Okay. And if um, if you're dropped, yes, then you can go re-enroll after you get your financial aid award. Uh, but it's all about timing. Some, some students, depend upon when they get it, if it's early in the process and that file is done, um, we will start awarding as soon as we kick off everything for the 2019-20 academic year. Okay. Great, great. Mm -hmm. All right, so I want to get now to when you enroll, some pop-ups you might encounter. So sometimes students, these are things that sometimes stop students. They think, oh no, what am I looking at? I've done something wrong. I'm, I'm not sure what this is. I don't want to click here. And I just want to talk briefly about them. Uh, if you were a flexible placement student, the first time you go to enroll in classes, you're going to have to accept or decline flexible placement. There's a tax form that pops up when you go to enroll. And then there's a, another pop-up called uh, classes not in my learning planner that I want to talk about. So the first one is accepting or declining flexible placement. If you qualified for flexible placement and you can, you, when you go to enroll in classes, it's going to ask you initially if you'll be declining or accepting any of those flexible placement recommendations. See down here at the bottom of this page, 
down here, you're going to click either decline or accept. Now, if you choose to decline in any of these areas, I want you to reach out to your academic advisor and I want you to ask them about Ready, Set, Succeed because we like free stuff, don't we, Todd? Yes, we do. I like giving I it away. It. I love it. And the college has a great program right now for students who qualify for flexible placement and choose to decline one or more areas of that flexible placement. There are a few other qualifications that your advisor can talk to you about, but they've got a program. It's a two semester, two term course where you'll be provided a coach, a mentor, and a free laptop to use, Todd. Hey, and if you complete that. this Ready, Sex, Succeed can for I the two terms, I, I don't know, you could ask. Right. Fill out one of those surveys and talk to an academic advisor and okay, see, I think that's a great idea. <laughs> If you complete the Ready, Set, Succeed course called Neighborhoods for Success, you would get to keep that laptop. So there are, there are a few other um, you know, requirements and things, but if you qualify for flexible placement and you decline in any area, I want you to reach out to your advisor because this is a great opportunity, again, to get that free swag, that free stuff we like, and it's a free laptop, people, if, if you complete this. So reach out, okay? The next um, pop-up that I want to talk about is the 1098T form. This is just a lifetime learning education tax credit form. Comes around tax time, around February. You just need to indicate if you want to receive it electronically or if you want to receive it via US mail and get a hard copy. You click the radio button that applies and you click accept and you're, you're moved through that process. You confirm a little bit of information like um, your email address and your physical address, and that's it. Now this two more questions. We have a couple Are questions? Yeah. Great, yeah, let's do that before we go to the next pop-up. Okay, and this is from Libby. Libby. Okay, can I take a placement test at any local college? I'm having trouble finding a place near me to take a placement test. Libby, that's a great question. So yes, distance students, can set up proctored testing. It's usually at a local community college near you. Uh, there is often a proctoring fee involved if you're not a student at that college, but you can um, set that up. What I'd like you to do is complete the WIT survey, the um, Titans Live survey tonight, and select academic advising. When someone calls you back, they'll be able to talk you through that and finding um, where to go on the website to set up proctored testing near you. You can def we can definitely set that up for you, okay? And we have another testing sure. question from Melanie. What if I took all the tests hurt when I was in high school because I was taking college classes during high school, but I haven't taken any classes since then? Do I need to retake reading, writing, and math? I graduated in 2016. So, Melanie, um, it, that depends. It sounds like you took the PERT because you did some dual enrollment classes. And so if you, if you were dual enrolled here at SPC or another Florida um, public university or college on the Common Course numbering system, then you may very well have taken a class that would waive that PERT testing. Um, the only thing I, I could see is uh, if, based on your high school, you may need PERT testing, but based on your graduation date, if it was a, a Florida public high school, it's sounding like you would not need placement testing. So again, there, there are a lot of variations to this. So what I'd ask you to do is fill out that Titans Live survey, but it does sound like you probably took the PERT and took some dual enrollment classes. That would mean PERT uh, very well may not be required for you, okay? And we have another financial aid question sure. from LG Avisto. Should I apply for financial aid first before I register for my class? Well. That depends. Again, um, you can do either or first. Okay, most people think, hey, I need to do financial aid first before I register. You don't have to. Okay, you can register right now. You can do your, you can do your, you know, application for financial aid later, or you can do your financial aid and then register later. The main thing that you have to ask yourself is this: if you are going to go ahead and get registered now, because we're so close to the start of the term, and if you haven't already applied for financial aid, then you need to be able to pay for that course up front, out of your pocket, or as now that payment plan, right? Payment. Yeah, exactly. use so that payment plan. That's what it's there for. And go ahead and get great option. Because you want to get started right now, yeah. then go ahead and do that. And then get your FAFSA completed after that. If you don't have the ability to do that or the means to pay for that course up front, then yes, I would recommend that you apply for financial aid. But you can register for one of the later starts, like Express Session, and you know our eight-week mod two, or one of the or one of the dynamically dated uh, course starts. 
you can register for those right now because again, your due date is gonna be a little bit down the road, like in September sometimes. So again, it just depends on your situation. If you're looking to get started by Monday, you need to make sure you have the funds available right now because if you're just starting the financial aid process, I can tell you nine times out of 10, it's not gonna be completed before classes start or your due date come up. Yeah. On hopefully, Monday. Yeah. Hopefully that answers your question at least though. Yeah, great. All right, so I'm gonna get back to some more um, pop-ups that come up. This one is one that um, throws students quite a bit, Todd. Mm -hmm. So it's classes not in my learning planner. So this pop-up is telling a student that the course that they're trying to enroll in, EDF 1005, you have entered, are not in your learning plan. Would you like to continue registering? Oftentimes, students think that means that course is not required for their degree or that course will not be covered by financial Honestly, assistance. That's, that's All that issue. means is that the student, him or herself, has not set up their My Learning Planner with that particular course in it. The My Learning Planner is a helpful tool offered through the college and through your portal. It's something students do. So it's just telling you, you did not put that course in your My Learning Planner. It doesn't have anything to do with whether that course is actually part of your curriculum or not, or whether it would qualify for financial assistance. So my advice would be, um, I would say, yes, I would like to continue registering. And then I would just reconfirm that that is part of your um, degree requirements and that it will be covered uh, and used when calculating financial assistance. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Um, so, Thina, I, th I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. That's a great name. Thina wants to know where to find out how much the online programs are, the tuition and fees page. So let's take you to that. That's a great question. So I'm here on the regular uh, web website, the spcollege.edu. And I'm going to scroll down to, I'm going to find this under financial aid, aren't I, Todd? Uh, how much the online Tuition and fees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then on the left, I see a tuition and fees link. And it gives you the credit, the cost per credit hour for both lower division and then upper division, which are those 3,000 and 4,000 uh, baccalaureate level programs. Mm -hmm. And then there is a link to view the current fee schedule. So um, on there, you'll find lab fees and various fees that apply to different classes, depending on the particular class. For online classes um, right now for uh, lower division, the fees are $15 per credit hour, in addition to the cost of tuition, in addition to that $111.75. Yeah. And you okay. mentioned what I was gonna say, yeah, these fees here that you see listed here do not um, do not take into consideration lab fees and those Right, fees. tuition right. is separate from fees, right. but you can click financial aid and then click on tuition and fees and you can find all the information you need. Right. We have another question by Tracy. What do you do if you get the pop-up that says that it is not on your learning plan, even though it is, and will not be covered by your financial aid? So I'm not sure, Tracy, if this is the pop-up you got when you tried to, to register. So um, if this is it, it's not necessarily not part of your curriculum and not going to be covered by your financial aid. This pop-up just means you have not set up your My Learning Planner. You have not um, set up your courses term by term to determine how long it'll take you to graduate. It's, it's basically a tool for students that you can utilize. So if you get this pop-up, that's what that's about. Right. Now, if you're saying that you received an email from financial aid saying mm -hmm. that a course mm -hmm. is outside your major, then I recommend that you reach out, to, uh, complete that Titans Live tonight ask to speak to an academic advisor, and we can talk about why that might be com coming up for you. Might be that you've already taken a class that meets right. that requirement, or that you've um, or that met you, the credit requirement for that you, particular or requirement. Or you just got into a degree program, or you just made a change, it may not have been updated in the system yet. So you do have to give at least 24 to 48 hours for that to get updated in the system so right. that they can catch up with it. So it could be a number of different reasons, but if you're getting the error specifically is speaking of your learning plan, that does not mean that financial aid won't pay for right. That's a totally different um, error message, and that's what uh, uh, Terry was referring to earlier. Excellent. Now, speaking of enrollment error messages, I want to go through a few with you that you're likely to encounter. Um, Smart Start. Students have to enroll in Smart Start. It's a free orientation that you must take during your first term of enrollment. If you get that error message, you need to enroll in that class. 
Comp 1, Comp 2, ENC 1101 and 1102. Students are required to complete Comp 1 within the first six credit hours you attempt unless you need developmental coursework. And you need to complete Comp 2 within the first 24. If you get that enrollment error, you have to add the appropriate class to your schedule. If you have trouble, fill that Titans uh, live survey out and an academic advisor will um, call you back and talk you through that. Requisite co-requisite. Certain classes have to be taken in a particular order. One class before another or one class with another is in the case of natural sciences with labs. Um, additionally, if you're required to take a developmental course, you might get a requisite error for our SLS 1101, which is the college experience course within that. Um, a great example of the pre and co-requisite is microbiology. Microbiology requires either anatomy and physiology two with lab or biology one with the lab and a lab with that course. So just to, just to kind of give you an idea of some of the things, if, if you're getting that requisite error message and you're thinking, what, I'm doing everything right, reach out to your academic advisor. That's what they're there to walk you through. And if you're listening to me tonight, I want you to fill out that Titans Live survey so someone will call you back so we can get you going. Um, full class error messages. We talked about some solutions earlier. You can look for a class that's um, open, another class of the same course. You can find another degree requirement to enroll in, or you can submit the SPC course survey yes. um, from within class search. Yes, that's fair. Yeah. Yes. Um, and then one final one you get often is cannot add the class due to a time conflict. Again, that means you're trying to add a class at a time you've already scheduled a, an, a first class for. You know, mm -hmm. if you're already taking a class on Mondays and Wednesdays at three o'clock, you can't add a class Mondays and Wednesdays at 310, same time frame. Uh, so you want to search for another class offering, you want to maybe swap some classes or consider other course requirements within your degree. I think we have another question. We do, don't we? Yeah. Is it a good time? Yeah, it's a great time because I want to give Lisa a swag bag. Lisa is one of our final question askers. Lisa, put your t-shirt size and your last name in the uh, chat box. And we're going to send you some great Titan merchandise. What does Lisa want to know, Todd? Lisa says, I enrolled in Smart Start, but cannot find it under my courses. Oh, great question, Lisa. So when you log in under my courses, if your Smart Start starts this Monday, and you might be in my, if you're an online Smart Start, you might be in my class, Lisa. Wouldn't that be fun? Mm -hmm. But uh, you're not going to see it until Friday. That's when it will populate on that kind of landing page for your My Courses, and you'll be able to go into the course, you'll be able to view course content, see the class syllabus, all of that. You're not going to be able to see Monday's classes today. You will be able to see them on Friday, okay? Do we have any other, other, other questions at this time? The last thing I want to show again is steps to register. You want to click on register for classes. You want to click on enroll. You want to click on add a class. You can search for classes, but really I, I would almost pop up two side-by-side -side screens right now. I would use that, uh, the website page that we showed you earlier. Our, our website's showing you these great class lists, classes that are open, quite easy to use. You can email yourself your favorites if you click the, the star and favorite them. And then you would have that email with your classes and then you can toggle back, use the class number and get enrolled in classes. If you come up with any enrollment errors, you can think about the things we've discussed in this webinar. And then um, if not, fill out that Titan survey or reach out to your academic advisor. Advising, yeah, yeah. Um, I've got one final question from Kaylee. I'm trying to register for a class and chose EC in the search option. However, I'm seeing that various classes have the room noted as SE, SP, TS, Internet. That is a great question. And because I'm an online advisor and you asked about online classes, Ely, I'm sending you a swag bag. Put your t-shirt size and your last name in the chat box. So what that means is the instructor is located or works out of that particular campus. Internet means that um, if it's just SE, SP, TS Internet, that um, is offered fully online and the instructor works out of that um, out of that campus. I want to uh, I want to let you know that we're also going to send a swag bag to Caitlin who uh, submitted the first survey. So Caitlin, you submitted the first survey. 
we may need to reach out to you to get your t-shirt size, but we're going to send you a survey. I want to thank you all for um, logging in this evening. I, yes. I, I know we're running possibly a few minutes over, so I thank you for hanging in there with me. I want you to know you're now part of the Titan family, okay? That you're standing at the door to the Titan house, yes. and we are ready to, to have you come in, knock on that door. We're going to open it up and let you in. Your door might have some locks, but we're here to help you unlock those locks right. and get you in. You have the key. Definitely, definitely. Just the fact that you tuned in was you taking that first step. You're now part of our community. We care about you, um, and we're excited to have you now be part of our family. Yes, we are. Todd, I think it's been a great webinar. What do you think? I think it's been great. Yep. I think it's been terrific. And what do you have to say? I'm ready to end it. Are you? Yes, I All am. All right, let's do it. Go, Go Titans! Titans.